Greetings, everyone. Today we're talking about some of the therapeutic effects of essential oils. I just wanted to talk briefly about essential oils and some of the benefits to provide you with some very general guidelines and to hopefully um, motivate you to begin to incorporate them more into your life. Now, essential oils are the essence uh, of the flower. They're the most concentrated part of the flower, hence the name essential. They are volatile, non-fatty oils. Non-fatty in the sense that they're more gaseous. They evaporate, if, unless you, and, and, which is one of the reasons why we have to use carrier oils. But they're not fatty oils like jojoba, olive oil, coconut oil. So the essential oils haven't come from the most essential part of the plant, the inner essence of the plant are highly, highly concentrated. It's for this reason that they're extremely therapeutic, but it's also for this reason that you do have to use some simple guidelines. So I hope today to just give you some idea about how to use the essential oils, some, some of the more popular oils maybe, and just to hopefully encourage you to do more research and to begin to consider really using them in your life because they are really amazing. I've been using the essential oils for upwards of 15 years. As you all know, that's all I use in my hair. When I was dealing with uh, some past surgeries, I only used uh, an essential oil blends that I made. I used them, them for my skin to get the wrinkles out that I was dealing with some years ago. I used essential oils. So I attribute my essential oil use to my health in a lot of ways. Essential oils can be used for uh, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual pursuits or health. Uh, there are certain oils that are used for meditation that aid in helping you to reach alternate, alternate, oh goodness, alternative states of consciousness. There are certain oils that are used for your mental and emotional health. They aid with anxiety. They lift your mood. They help you move past depression, things of that nature. And then the physical benefits of essential oils also can't be underestimated. There are certain blends that I put together for joint pain, certain blends that I may use for earaches. Uh, you can use certain blends for dizziness, anything you name of, or you can think of, you can use essential oils for them. And last but not least, what we're talking about over time in my videos are for your hair health. Essential oils have a lot of nutritive and uh, therapeutic properties. And if you think about it, in God's wonderful universe, in this great creation, however you want to refer to it, nature has given us everything that we need for our health and wellness. So when I hear people put down essential oils or they talk about things are not being been documented, but they can suggest all of these um, distorted and, and environmentally unfriendly products to use, I just kind of shake my head and I'm like, who would not believe that these things could be beneficial? We eat plants. We consume the benefits of live food each and every day that comes from plants. And so it's got to be nutritive for us. So anyway, um, just some general guidelines. Whenever you're going to be using essential oils, you want to, first of all, make sure that you test for your own allergic reaction to essential oils and do a little bit of research. Some oils uh, can cause a reaction in certain people. For example, my daughter has asthma. Raven Sarah is excellent for opening up her chest, unlike anything. It, it beats eucalyptus, it beats chamomile. It's, it's amazing in the way that it opens up her lungs and it acts as an antispasmatic, similar to her inhaler. However, certain other oils can set off a, a reaction within her. So you want to try oils out during a time that you're not having an allergic reaction already. And certain oils typically are not allergic, but uh, allergens, but some of them, everybody's different. So you want to always um, use them with a little bit of caution as you become more intimate with the oils. Some of them can be uh, skin sensitizing or you can be sensitive uh, skin wise to some oils. So that's another reason why you want to do maybe a patch test if you know you're going to be using a particular oil and it's new to you. If you typically have allergies, if you're someone that doesn't have a lot of allergies then you probably wouldn't need to worry about it. If you're pregnant, 
you want to avoid many of the oils except those ones that are safe for pregnancy. Um, certain oils bring on contractions. Certain essential oils like lavender and rosemary are not recommended for you when you're pregnant. They can leach over along with many other oils and anything that you consume into your breast milk. You want to be careful with the dosages of oils that you use around children or that you administer to children. You want to be careful about ingesting oils. Um, there are some really good companies that produce therapeutic grade essential oils and, um, and they advertise that, but so do a host of other companies today advertise therapeutic grade essential oils and they may not necessarily be therapeutic grade. You don't know the distillation uh, methods or the way they're extracting the essence of the plant, what kind of solvents they're using, if things are pesticide free. So you want to be careful. Two companies for sure that I know produce very high grade oils are Oshadi oils, O-S-H-A-D, I and um, Young Living oils. They're a little bit more pricey, but those oils are extremely quality oils. The Young Living oils, many of them can actually be ingested. Although I typically discourage that unless you really know what you're doing with the oils. Um, other oils that you can get from your average health store, like uh, Now Oils, um, this is a popular oil, uh, Aracacia uh, Oils. Those are decent oils to be used. These are not oils that I would be ingesting by any means, but um, they're good. They're decent quality oils. So you want to be careful with the kinds of the, the, the quality of the oil and where it's actually coming from. Something else you want to make sure is that you always dilute your essential oils with a carrier oil. A carrier oil is a fatty oil, an oil that you can do this to, um, that carries the oil deeper into your skin. So it actually heightens and enhances the um, therapeutic value of the oil that you're using, but it also makes it more spreadable. If you're using it for massage or if you're using it in your hair, you can actually um, take that oil that is very concentrated and dilute it and get more out of it. It also protects you from the concentration of the oil. Keep in mind that these are natural essences, but just because they're natural doesn't mean that we don't have to take precautions. The interesting dynamic about essential oils is that essential oils um, are so concentrated. They are in their proportion or in their ratio not found in nature in those concentrations. We uh, produce them and we bring them together and we create a very concentrated uh, amount of it that you normally wouldn't find in nature. For example, let's take rose oil, which is extremely expensive. It takes over a hundred pounds of roses to make less than, uh, what, one or two milliliters of, of rose oil. A hundred pounds of roses. So that gives you an idea of whatever's in that drop that you use to get rid of your wrinkles or to clear up acne. It's, uh, it's not something you can find in nature. It took a hundred uh, roses or it took what was derived from a hundred roses to actually get that. So that's, that's a good measure or good way for you to relate to the concentration of these oils and why you do have to be careful. You know, the body's filtering system, the kidneys and the livers, you don't liver. You don't want to overload those by mixing oils and using them without regard to any moderation. That is very, very, very important. Although most oils you can use generally without having too many problems, imagine putting together a whole lot of them and using them on a regular basis in, my, in amounts that were not diluted enough. Keep in mind, usually oils, uh, when you put them together, will have a synergistic property or synergistic uh, capacity that is much greater than the sum of the parts of the oils. It's very, very important. Know too that oils and they have a particular vibration because they are energy. So oils are can be correlated to certain parts of our body. Um, for example, if we know that, you know, let's take let's take something easy. The crown chakra is our connection to the divine, right? This part of our, our body is vibrating at, at an extremely high frequency. Our thoughts travel faster than the speed of sound. The frequency of them is much faster versus the frequency of our even our heart chakra. So oils that have an extremely high frequency balance this area. Oils like myrrh, 
oils like frankincense, okay, uh, are very effective in this area. So you're able to match up the frequency of the oil with particular parts of your body for therapeutic effects, which is very important. Um, something else you have to be cautious of when using oils is photosensitivity. Certain oils, in addition to the citrusy oils, which are for sure uh, oils that you have to be careful with, um, less than 12 hours after applying them going out into direct sunlight because they can make your skin sensitive and, and you don't want to put yourself in an unsafe situation. So oils like tangerine, um, neruli oil, grapefruit oil, lemon oil, you don't want to just apply those to the skin and then head outside. So uh, you, you do want to keep in mind some of the precautions that you need to take, but to not scare you from essential oils, I'm here to also say that you should embrace their therapeutic effects. Uh, we're talking about now I want to move into carrier oils. What's the difference between a carrier oil and an essential oil? A carrier oil is a fatty oil, okay? What we consider oil. Many carrier oils you can also cook with, like grapeseed oil, like coconut oil, like olive oil. So this one is castor oil, black seed oil, which is amazing, to say the least. Black seed kept me from having throat surgery many, many years ago. Repaired my vocal cords in three weeks. I went in the Friday before I was supposed to have my preoperative uh, 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 session with the surgeon, and my vocal cords were healed. They, previous to that, were only vibrating at uh, one-third. Only the top one-third of my vocal cords were vibrating. I OD'd on black seed oil for three weeks, and hey, what can I say? I was a believer. Almond oil is another popular carrier oil. Vegetable glycerin is a decent carrier oil. Uh, I don't use this one much. I use this for, for, for cosmetic stuff because it's water-soluble. Uh, avocado oil, jojoba, again, you have many, many more. Argan oil, you have, uh, oh gosh, coconut oil. I think I mentioned olive oil before. So many different oils that you can use. Remember, you put the essential oil in the carrier oil to not only dilute it, to make it more spreadable, to make it less concentrated as you move it around your skin, and also to magnify the effects of it. It literally carries the oil into your skin. Although they're not the only way that you can, that you can um, dilute and use the oils. Um, essential oils, on the other hand, are more gaseous, which is why when you open up a bottle of an essential oil, you can smell it. And this is actually one of the ways to consume oils, essential oils, is by smelling them. The molecules in an essential oil are so tiny that by in, inhaling them, the molecules immediately begin to stimulate your nervous system. Immediately the molecules hit the, hit the bloodstream. So they work very quickly, which is why um, oils can be used to lift your spirit and to ease depression and to ease anxiety and so many other things. They work so fast. So this one, oh, is oregano. Oh gosh, you use oregano for a lot of stuff, but you must dilute it. It will burn your tongue off. Oregano can be used for bleeding gums. It can be used for cleaning your mouth up. It can be used for sore throat. Uh, oregano oil, one drop of this is more powerful, in, in, especially if it's Mediterranean oregano oil, than even penicillin. So you can use this. This stuff is amazing. For overall health, um, using this or taking a bit of this every day will knock everything out. You People treat STDs with, with oregano oil, all sorts of things. Um, this is angelica root anti-inflammatory, um, anti, uh, uh, oxidant, high in antioxidants, so many ingredients in angelica root. Again, these are, uh, more gaseous. So if you were to put this on your skin, it's going to begin to evaporate. And this one happens to be tangerine. It's going to begin to evaporate. You can see it happening as you look at it, which is the reason why you want to use the carrier oil. This one here, rosewood oil, when I was dealing with my adult acne, amazing. The acne blends that I make with this work amazing. This one happens to be turmeric. And you guys know, uh, turmeric is like the holy grail of roots. And we hear so much about turmeric today. It's anti-inflammatory properties. It's autoimmune um, 
the stuff that it does for autoimmune illnesses, joint conditions, all sorts of stuff. Turmeric, Noah's Ark, you need turmeric. Um, this is bay laurel, good for skin, good for hair, just amazing. This is another, uh, this is margarine. I'm trying to get some of the less common oils that I'm sharing with you, but bear in mind that um, any plant has an essential oil that goes along with it. Right now, if you come in my home, you're gonna smell cinnamon oil. I have it in a diffuser. Cinnamon cleans the air, it kills, um, it kills uh, 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 bacteria in the air. It also smells very pleasant. It's one of the many oils you can use for not only your air, but also in your body. If you know anything about cinnamon, it can really heal you. It's good for diabetes, so many benefits. Um, this is galbanum. This is another essential oil that's good for the skin. It's also a spiritual oil. Um, this is vetiver. Vetiver is another oil that's good for like so many things. Uh, and frankincense, one of the spiritual oils, people use this for altered states of consciousness. I use it for my wrinkles. And I gotta tell you guys, I haven't used frankincense in about, for my wrinkles in about two to three years because when I used it consistently for about three months, it got rid of the three lines that I had here. I lie to you not. You know how like when you do this, those lines eventually, they come here. I had them, they were etched in my head and I'm like, I was like in maybe like early 40s, late 30s when, when I had those wrinkles and I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. You know, and I, I know I, I'm expressive when I talk, so I'm always doing like this and making faces. So I'm like, that's not gonna stop. I gotta do something about this. So in a lot of um, high-end cosmetics, they'll use frankincense. Frankincense is amazing. Not to mention this stuff shrinks tumors. Um, it is excellent for joint um, soreness and pain, like from uh, 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 arthritis, stuff like that. So these are just some essential oils. Guys, there's so many essential oils and I have tons of them because I'm constantly using them. How can you how can you take them? You can place them in your bath. Again, when you put them in your bath, it's always a good um, precaution to put a little bit of, um, put them in a little bit of carrier oil first um, to carry them. You can put them in a diffuser. A diffuser is a little, um, gadget that you add water to you plug in and it diffuses the mist throughout your home it cleans the air it's a form of aromatherapy it's very soothing it's very relaxing it has a therapeutic effect a lot of times if you are sensitive to um, an oil and are having trouble applying it to your skin having uh, to having uh, being able to experience the beneficial effects of the oil in a diffuser is something that can aid you. So um, you can do it that way. You can, uh, again, you can just inhale the oil. That smells good. There was a time when I was less educated that I used to add a little bit of water on the stove and put a few essential oils in and let them kind of go up that way before I had a, had a diffuser. Um, you want to watch the heat though on these. It can destroy and actually uh, make some of the properties of it not safe. So I don't really recommend that unless you've done some research and you kind of really know what you're doing and you're comfortable. But uh, these are just some of the ways that you can use essential oils and so many of them are excellent for our hair. You, you probably remember me mentioning quite a few if you watch my video uh, on the shampoo that I use and the... Um, moisturizer slash conditioner that I use with all of the different essential oils. Sage is wonderful for hair. Geranium is wonderful for hair. Lavender is great for hair. Bergamot is great for hair. Frankincense is even great for hair. Roman chamomile is great for hair. I mean, so many of the oils overlap in their benefits, not only and the therapeutic benefits of inhaling them that they have on the nervous system, but on the physical benefits of when the hair cut, when they come into contact with the hair. Some of them are really good for shine. Many of them are good for scalp irritation. A lot of them are good for helping to, to moisturize the hair and seal in uh, moisture when used with carrier oils. It's just amazing the nutritive benefits, not to mention the fact that they strengthen your hair. Uh, some of them are very good at removing dead skin cells to improving the strength of your follicles. 
to doing so many things. So I encourage you to Google and to learn more about essential oils. Continue to watch the channel as I begin to share some of the different ways that I use the essential oils. And keep in mind, let your spirit be a guide to the oils. If you feel particularly drawn to an oil, then that oil is an oil that you should begin to use and you should begin to um, learn more about. If you, if you feel particularly repelled by an oil, then leave that oil alone. Peppermint oil, for example, is an oil that I can't tolerate. I don't like to smell it. I don't want it, you know, I have a, I go to a, um, a doctor who does my colon cleanses and he puts a peppermint heating pad on me. And each time he puts that on me, I get nauseous. So I just take it off when he leaves the room. But certain oils, if you don't like them, stay away from them. It means essentially that your body is, is resisting it somehow. And of the many oils that you can, can participate in using, there's no reason to choose an oil unless you feel particularly drawn to it or you like the odor of it. If it doesn't sit with you, leave it alone. And when you're mixing oils, use your nose as a guide for uh, what it is you want to mix. Because so many of the qualities can overlap, you can find the fragrances that work well together. It's kind of like making a perfume in a manner of speaking. So feel, feel free to, 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 to really experiment with the oils and to, 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 to get a feel for how certain oils make you feel, how certain oils impact your body. If you feel different after taking a bath in a particular oil, uh, do more research on how these oils not only affect your hair, but how they help to balance your chakra system, the energy system in your body, and how a lot of these oils when used in a very concentrated capacity can help overcome some of the um, ailments that you may be actually taking um, synthetic substances or medications for. There are just so many ways I encourage you to find out. This is Tanisha Ali with Tanisha's Locks and Beauty Tips. If you benefited from this video, please leave a comment. Tell me what oils you're using or how you're using them or some of the amazing effects that you've had with some of the oils. Like the channel, share, stay engaged. And if you have suggestions for videos, let me know. And uh, if I can get around to it, which I most likely can, I'll definitely oblige you. Thank you so much again for being a part of this journey with me. My love goes out to all of my subscribers and I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you.